All right, everybody, Roz back with another video. On this video, I wanted to focus on my check process, uh, the way I, I check the work that I'm doing before I continue any further. So this would be what I would call the initial sketch. I'm not sure how well it, it shows up on camera, but the lines are relatively loose and they're done very, very lightly. Okay, so I can I can make things disappear. Like for example, the line up here that marks the top of his head, I can go in there, mark that off. Like I'm sure you've heard, if you watch any of my other videos, always draw lightly. So I always try to remember Pennsylvania. Why Pennsylvania? Okay, because the acronym I like to use is PA, okay, or Pennsylvania, because P stands for proportions, A stands for angles, okay? And so what I mean by that is that's what I go into when I'm going to check my drawing. I didn't go into a lot of details. You can see I still have the width and the height of certain things. You can still see my little lines, my little... Uh, landmark lines trying to figure out where this goes where that goes and they're still on here it's not ready to be a drawing yet it's still in the sketch phase it's important you understand that there's two phases to the techniques that i like to use i use a sketch phase where it's literally lightly drawn out okay or sketch where things are easily erased and nothing is done in a a, a lot of detail okay they're just done to show me what the path that I'm on, if it's right or not. That, that's all that the sketching phase should be doing for you. That's it. It should not be going into a lot of details and you should not have any shading whatsoever, okay? You don't wanna have a bunch of, why? Because you're just working extra hard for something you ultimately may erase 10 minutes from now. So you just went into doing a whole bunch of shading and then you find out you have to move the eye or the nose or whatever it is. So you just wasted an enormous amount of time. So there's really no point into uh, shading or taking any of the work into a lot of detail. Now this might look somewhat detailed to you uh, in this video and I apologize for the lighting. I'm in a new location and uh, you know, lighting is what it is. But it, it's not, it's basically just a, the, I, I guess you would call it a um, football shaped kind of eye and this one's squinnier. And I just kind of compared one thing to the next. And I stopped it here because I want to just talk about how I go from this phase, the sketch phase, into the drawing phase. So before I continue, while things are still done lightly, okay? And by the way, this is a Strathmore um, white paper. Okay, I think on the video it looks a little bit brown and maybe even grayed out a little bit. Uh, again, that's the lighting in here, so it is what it is. It actually looks better in real life than it does on the video. So I used, the whole time I was using the General, as my favorite brand of charcoal pencil that I was using, I don't know if you can see that, the HB Hard, okay? And again, there's different um, hard, hardnesses or levels of, of darkness and extra hard would be lighter than this but being charcoal you know saying light is kind of crazy because it's still pretty damn dark but it's a little lighter than this and sometimes I, I use my extra hard um, instead of the HB hard when I work on really light colored paper like white paper because since it is lighter it'll uh, it'll make the sketch phase a little bit more successful in the way as far as erasing the lines but anyways, so what I mean by uh, PA, right, which are the initials for Pennsylvania, okay? All I mean, I'm not from Pennsylvania, I'm actually in, in South Florida, I'm from South Florida, so it just, it just happens to coincide with the way I like to explain this. PA stands for proportions and angles. So proportions are the big one, that's the first one I think you should concentrate on. Don't worry about angles. And, and all that later on after the proportions are checked, that's when you want to check that. So what are proportions? You're just trying to look for the big pieces of meat. 
okay? You look at your facial thirds. Now, facial thirds are usually from the hairline to the eyebrow, eyebrow to the nose, nose to the chin. <laughs> In this case, Samuel Jackson is bald. So he has no hairline to speak of. So instead, we'll just take what we would call a hairline, just go to the very top of his head. Those are the big three of the face, okay? Those big three pieces. It's just a way of simplifying all of this nightmare and just making it into more manageable um, pieces. And so I'm going to compare the big three to each other. Now my drawing, because my drawing could be way off, but on the actual model, I would be doing this if this is, if Samuel Jackson was actually sitting in front of me, okay, posing, I'd be doing the same thing. You can do the exact same thing and you can look back at my older videos where I teach you about, you know, doing this thing and comparing, you know, size, that's called comparative measurements. You're measuring something and then comparing it to something else and saying, hey, it's the same as this or it's smaller than that, or it's bigger than this, or a third of this, or half of that. That's all comparative measurements is, okay? So let's look at the big three. And so we're gonna go from the top of his head to his eyebrow line, and we're gonna go right from the top of his eyebrow to his top of his head, and it's that big, my fingernail to the tip of my pencil. Now I'm gonna compare that to the center third, which is from the eyebrow down to the bottom of the nose. And as we can see, my pencil to finger space is bigger than the center third, right? In other words, this is right here, this little area is smaller in size than this up here, okay? How much smaller? Well, you know, I guess I can give you a, a, a percentage, a fraction, of but a little bit smaller, right? And that's where experience comes in. When I say a little bit, as you start drawing, you'll start figuring it out for yourself what a little bit means to you, okay? There's no point in me giving you math because this goes from an art project to a math project. This is not this is not a science project, not a math project. This is an art project. You're using the the uh, imaginative side of your brain. You're not using the scientific side as much. So just calm yourself down and understand this third right here, the centerpiece, is a little bit smaller. See the tip of my pencil it's not hitting the top of the head a little bit smaller how much smaller what would you call that i don't know 15 10 percent. i don't know whatever designation you want to get it doesn't matter i need to have the same relative difference even though my drawing is bigger obviously the size difference between these two is going to be bigger on my drawing but it has to be relatively the same and that again that goes into practice you just got to practice and do this often so I'm just going to go from my center third, I'm going to measure that, and I'm going to compare it to the top third. And it's a little bit smaller. I would say it's a decent amount smaller. I think it's relatively the same proportion, just eyeballing it. So that works for me. Now let's go to the bottom third. Now he's got his head kind of tilted slightly up. So we don't really see a hard edge to the bottom of his chin. So what I did, I used this shadow line right here where his chin drops from the front part down towards his throat. I just used that and said that's the bottom of his chin. That's it. I just designated that at the end. You can see this line right here. So then the bottom of his nose to the bottom of the chin is that big. Now I'm going to compare that to the center, and it's considerably bigger. I'm going to compare that to the top, and it's a little bit bigger than the top. So now, since the top is closer inside of this, now I just need to say basically... My bottom third is a little bit bigger than my top third. That's it, just a little bit. Now let's see if that's true. My nose line to chin line is that big. Now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna place it up top to compare it. And it's a little bit bigger right up there, somewhere up here. It's a little bit bigger than my top third. So I'm getting the proportions roughly, at least by my estimate, of what I see here, I'm getting that here. Okay, so that's proportions. Then the second part of that, okay, and then you would continue to do that. And uh, let me just continue with proportions. Let's just say that you're looking at it and you're saying, you know, there's something wrong there, right? Now, that's easy to say because it's easy for the brain to feel uncomfortable and say, well, that, you know, something, something doesn't sit well with me. I just feel like there's something wrong with that drawing that I made. You know, and you look at it, and you say, you know what? 
I feel like the eyes, and notice I said I feel. A lot of this goes by feel, okay? And then I'm gonna give you a more, uh, let's just say scientific way of proving that your uh, guess, your feeling is correct or incorrect. So let's just say that you thought the eyes were too wide. You made them just too big from left to right. Well, let's see the spacing here is bigger in my estimate than one of these eyes right here. So this eye is smaller from left to right than this temple area right here next to the eye. The spacing between his eyes. Now I already had done the uh, proportion on him a while back and, uh, and then I stopped drawing him. So I just picked this up for the sake of this one video. I know that the, dif the distance between the tear duct to the tear duct, which is usually one eye's width, usually fits in there. One eye from left to right fits between your tear ducts. Some people are born differently, okay? Some people have proportions that are outside, let's say, say the norm, okay? And Samuel Jackson, in this case, his spacing in here is a little bit bigger than one eye from left to right. And so then this eye should be roughly the same as this. And I just did a little white line where I believe these two eyelids touch. So it's where these two eyelids touch over here. That way I can compare them. So I'm keeping this eye relatively the same size as this eye as we are very uh, geometric creatures. We are roughly the same on the left as we are on the right. Okay, there's gotta be minor differences, but for the sake of this argument, just imagine you're pretty much the same on your right as you are on your left. So I need to have a drawing that has very little flesh off to the side of the left eye, then having a left eye, then more than one eye's width in between, then the right eye, and then more than one eye's width from the temple area over here, from the edge of the head to the edge of the eye on this side, okay? Now, I got a feeling that maybe this space here is similar to this space here. I don't know that for a fact, I'm gonna check. So I'm gonna go from the corner of the eye to the edge of the face, and it's roughly that big. And then I'm just gonna put it all the way over here to the tear duct. And it's close, but still a little shy of that. It's a little small. So let me just take one eye's width, this eye right here, and compare it to this base over here. And it's almost one eye, maybe a little bit bigger on this eye. So this is slightly larger than this eye. Then this is considerably larger than this eye then this eye should be roughly the same width as this eye. And then this width out here, you can, if you want to be really anal, I mean, I can just eyeball that, but let's just say you couldn't. That space compared to, let's just go to its opposite side, is roughly about half of the flesh on this side. So essentially what I'm saying is, this space here is a little bigger than one eye, than this eye right here. This space here is considerably bigger than both of these. This eye needs to be the same as this eye, and this little piece of flesh here is about half of this flesh here, okay? Now, if that's confusing, I understand, uh, especially if you're new to this, write that down. Just say right temple, left temple, right eye, left eye, and then I call this the cyclops eye, the space in between our eyes, you know, the cyclops monster that has the one eye in the middle. That's why I call it cyclops eye. It just makes it easier for me to remember. So you can just write that down as the, you know, those five areas, right temple, left temple, right eye, left eye, cyclops, and you just put them in order and then just write what the difference is. You know, you say this is the, the biggest pace here, this is the second biggest, then the two eyes are equal, and then this is half of that. Then those proportions have to match over here on my drawing. So this temple area, I'm calling it a temple because, you know, it's next to the eye over here, is roughly that big, and then that should be a little bit bigger than the eye, and it roughly is a little bit bigger than the eye. And the distance between tear duct to deer duct, let me go back to this. This should be smaller than the tear duct to tear duct. And it is. And my right eye should be roughly the same as my left eye. And it is. And then the left temple area, that piece of flesh out there, should be about half of the right temple. And it is. It's pretty close. So I think that's definitely doable. I think we can say, yeah, it's a safe bet that that's okay, that that's... That's not bad. So that's using proportions to figure out, man, I thought my eyes looked a little bit big. Now, if your eyes look too big from top to bottom, right, you think that the width is okay, and you just figured out how to do what I just showed you, 
but they're still not looking right. Maybe your eyes are too squinty or they're too large from top to bottom. And so they look humongous vertically or very narrow, right? Like they're both winking at you or something. You know, how do you solve that? How do you get around that problem? Same thing. We're going to just use the um, comparative measurements. If you look at the eye opening, just the wide of his eye, right? Eyelid to eyelid. That distance, let's just say, is roughly down there, down there, and then here's the bottom of the nose, okay? So he has one, two, three, and let's just say and a half, three and three quarter eye heights, okay? Now, just so you know, on average, most people have about five eye heights down to their nose. So your eye and then four imaginary eyes down to the bottom of the nose. He's built differently. He's got one eye that's squinting. The other one's opened up quite a bit. He's tilting his head back. Plus, I think he's just genetically, he's just built differently than the average person, at least in this one photograph I was able to find. So whatever, okay? Don't go by what the averages are because the averages won't always fit every single person you draw. You just want to know those because they are, uh, they're a way of knowing how to keep you within human proportions. Now I'm thinking what I'm going to do is a video one of these days that talk about all of the averages of your human face, the average human face, what the proportions are. Because I have a paper that I've done that I've handed out before. Um, I think one day I'm going to build, or I assume I'm going to video, uh, 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 make a little video about the different proportions of the face, you know, what a standard mouth, nose, eye, ear, all that. Just so you know it, and then um, I would suggest memorizing it. I know that's not the funnest thing to do, but it does save you a lot of time. When I draw, people say, wow, you are really, really fast. It's not that I'm moving fast. It's simply that the knowledge is in my head, and therefore I'm able to move faster because of the knowledge in my head, not because I'm physically moving faster. Okay, so we said he has one, two, three, and three quarter eyes. So now I need to have this distance once, twice, and yeah, closer to half. So I'm close. I would say that his right eye on the bottom here probably needs to come up just a tad, just a little tiny bit. Now I'm being very anal. Um, with experience, you'll become kind of anal too. You'll start seeing all kinds of little tiny, almost insignificant differences, but that's just because you've gotten good. After a while, you start getting really good at seeing things. Okay, so I got that distance. And then if the, the, the left eye looks right to me, but you could do the same thing where you measure out more or less one, two, three, four, five. And then you would just do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks good to me. But now if you felt that the eye was too wide, like I explained earlier, or too tall, now you know how to check that. Why do I mention the eye? Because most people struggle with the eyes. And the eyes, in, in, uh, in a way, kind of dominate the accuracy of your drawing. And so what ends up happening is if your eyes look really screwy, they tend to take away from the likeness. So if you get the eyes right, um, then pretty much the nose and mouth just kind of almost do themselves. They, they really, there's nothing to it, okay? So the same thing, if you felt that the nose was too wide or too, um, too tall, I mean, the nose, I look at the nose as a big sphere right here and then two little spheres intersecting it, right, going into it. So in this case, his nose, the height of his nose, if you were to finish off this ball, as you can see the shadow line, roughly right there, just below the bottom eyelid. So just below the bottom eyelid. I think I got a good, decent shape for that nose, so I feel good about that. And then you would do the same thing with the height of the mouth from the top of the upper lip to the bottom of the bottom lip, and then from left to right where they land, and how big is that compared to something else, and et cetera, et cetera. Same thing that I was showing you earlier with the eye or with the top to the head compared to the middle, et cetera. That's how you would use your proportional part of the PA or that Pennsylvania uh, acronym that I just taught you. The second part is angles. 
okay? Angles, it, it, it's actually two parts, angles and alignment, okay? It's just basically the same thing. Because when I say angles, people are thinking this, right? That angle, this angle, 20 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. I'm not talking about scientifically correct angles. That's, that's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the angles and the way things are aligned. For example, by using a plumb, a plumb line, basically a vertical or horizontal plumb line, I can determine where things are. Let's look at the edge of the mouth on the right side of the mouth. It pretty much touches on the left side of my pencil. It touches the edge of the iris on the eye. In other words, on my drawing, the ed outer edge of the iris, when I do an imaginary line down or actually draw it, it should be pretty much touching the corner of the mouth. That's how you know your mouth isn't too far right or left or too big. And so when I draw in that line, and it is roughly with the corner of the right mouth there. And so now the left side, we're going to go in there and my fan is making the paper move. It's cutting to about a third of the left eye and just outside the left nostril. So I'm going to say right there, I look up at the eye and then the left nostril. I think that looks pretty good. I think that looks really good. And so we're going to get rid of this little sketchy line there. And so that's using plumb lines. That's called angles and alignment. Okay. And then you look at the angle here, for example, on the jaw. And then I just look at that angle. I find it easier sometimes if, uh, if I'm tired or, or somebody asks me and I gotta, I'm trying to teach them. Look at the angle on that jaw there. And let's look at the angle that I drew. And I use two separate pencils. And I compare the pencils to each other. And they're roughly the same. Right? And if they're roughly the same, then you know you're good. But let's say on my drawing, let's just say my angle is like this on my jaw. And then you look at truth, which is the picture here. Right? The picture is, 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 is truth. It's reality. Look at my two pencils. This one is correct because it's on the picture. This one, look how low it is. It needs to come up significantly. Okay? And that's a way of checking yourself, just doing this right here. And then you would do the same thing on the other side, okay? And on the edge of the face, it's roughly, I know it's got an ear and it's bumpy, but generally speaking, it's this edge right here. And then let's see what edge I used. And I look at my two pencils and I'm thinking, you know, I could probably come out a little bit on the bottom here, which I already had drawn. earlier when I had done this. So I'm going to bring this out just a little bit, just a tad. And then the angle over here, and then you would do the same thing over there. And you could also transfer your pencil across. It's just, you know, if you don't have your hand staying still, you could move it as you're moving along and uh, cause yourself to make a mistake. And then let's look here. The cheek right here, it sticks out a little bit past the temple. And I just use my pencil and it does. And so here, this cheek sticks out just a little bit. And so sticking to the truth that we see here, we are applying that truth over here. Let's look at those ears. The top of the ears are roughly in line with the bottom eyelid, just below the bottom eyelid of the right eye. And so this ear is right where it needs to be with the right eye. So that's pretty darn close. Yeah, I like that. Maybe I can bring it down just a tiny bit. And that would be the top of his ear. And so that's basically my PA or Pennsylvania. Okay, I always tell people, Pennsylvania the hell out of this thing, which means, again, proportions and angles, and of course, alignment with the technically PAA. And you just continue to do that. Before you go any further, if you're not seeing a likeness at this point, if it's looking way off, then that's how you would check it. You're like, man, just go by feel. What just stands out on your drawing as a mistake? What just, just by looking at it, any normal person can say, man, look at those eyes I got on my drawing. They look too small or they look too big to me. Whatever that is, then just before you start drawing, they're not going to magically fix themselves when you keep drawing over them 
and, and, and shading. You need to fix it now before you go any further because it'll be too late later on. Then later on, you're erasing just a ton of work that you should have done at this stage, okay? And again, because everything is done so lightly, I can easily make all my lines disappear, okay? The edge of this head right here, it kind of bulges out, but it's relatively straight. I'm gonna use this side of my pencil, all the way up to more or less the top of his eyebrows. So it's relatively straight to the top of the eyebrows, roughly. And then it seems to go from being straight to curved. So I need to bring that out just a tad. And I wanna say this needs to come out just a little bit. And we all have a peak at the top of our head, even when you have hair. You have the right side of your head, and then even if you had hair and you were following the hairline, at some point, the hair reaches its highest point, and then it starts going back down. Where is that highest point? Well, in this case, he's bald. Where is that peak? I go up, and then where I start to drop down again is right here. Then you use, again, back to using a plumb line. I use a vertical plumb line, and I just put it up like this, and I notice that it's not really in the center of his face. It's just to the left. So just to the left of center, roughly right there, is that peak in his head. And then it starts to drop down on this side and then drop down on this side. That's how I like to do curves. I cut them down. I try to imagine either straight lines or cut them down in such a way where I'm able to say, well, this curves, well, where is the high peak of that curve before it goes back down again? Well, it goes right here. I stop, I drop a little line right there on my photograph. That's why it's, work, it's great to work off of printouts. Okay, but if I was drawing somebody from real life, as I've done many, many times, I would just go like this, hold my pencil up and say, you know, whatever, they got a, a bow in their hair, they got a, 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 I don't know, something in their hair that maybe stands out. And then you just follow the edge of your pencil down, or I like using a Barbie skewer. I don't have one with me, but anything, whatever you got. And then you just follow the edge down. You say, you know what? The peak in their head, when I stop right there, the peak goes like this and then it starts dropping down. It aligns with the very center of that person's head with the tear duct in the right eye or the left eye or whatever it is that it happens to line up with, you'll already have all this done. And now you need to say, well, let's just say it was with the right tear duct. Then you just find the right tear duct and you go up like this and then you would just make a mark and you know that would be the peak in the head or in the hair or whatever and go uh, on your way down again. And the same thing would be done if the person uh, had a hat, whatever the highest point of the hat. If it's a, say a baseball cap, there's usually some sort of little button looking thing on top or some sort of peak. You know, it goes up at some, at some point, it goes back down again. Where is that point where it comes back down? That's gonna be your peak and then just align it with something else on the face. So it'd be just constantly checking what lines up vertically with other things, what lines up horizontally with other things. The bottom of his ears line up with pretty much his mouth line. So my mouth line right here where the lips touch need to be the bottom of my ears, and it is. I could probably bring this up just a little bit. And that gives me very accurate depiction of the model that I have before me. This cheek to me is bothering me a little bit. It looks like I just took it out a little too much. If you're not sure about this jaw area, another way of checking that is go straight. Don't do angles. I've seen people do that on YouTube videos. If you're starting on an art uh, and drawing, painting, whatever, and you're trying to be accurate, just use horizontal and vertical plumb lines, okay? Make your measurements horizontal or vertical. You don't want to start measuring that because then you got to keep that same angle when you do your measurements on your drawing. That's very hard to do. Instead, just go straight across from the corner of his mouth to the edge of his jaw and it's that big. That means nothing until I compare it to something else on his face. And let's see what's the same as that in size. And so I'm just gonna go up to the landmarks that I did earlier and see if there's something that is the same. And you can do it horizontal compared to the horizontal. Now you look at that. Almost the full width of his nose, almost, is the same as 
the edge of the jaw to the corner of the mouth. So something, this space here is a little smaller than the width of his nose. So now I'm gonna go in, up to my drawing and see if I have something that this space here is a little smaller than my nose. That way I know that I'm doing the right proportions. And so there's the edge roughly and the edge there. I'm gonna compare it to my nose and it is the same space, just larger version of this, but I see proportionally speaking, it's about the same to the edge of the nostril there. So I feel really good. And then you would check the other side horizontally, boom, compare it. That would probably be around one eye's width or whatever it is. And then this should be about the same as that eye. And that's how you would continually check all your little dimensions, right? Man, I feel like I did a chin that is just bizarre. It's really, really big. Then go from the bottom of his lip down to what you call the bottom of his chin. Well, in this case, I said earlier, it's the edge of the shadow. What is that equal to be? Well, let's see right here. That chin is that big. Let's go up to something that is similar in size and I'm not finding anything. About the same width of his nose is the same as the bottom of his lip to the shadow line in his chin. So now let's see if that's true on my drawing. The width of his nose is roughly the same as chin to bottom lip. And there, as you can see, it's exactly the same. So I got very accurate proportions. Now there is a possibility of your drawing not always looking like the person at this stage. And the reason is you got all these little lines and, and nonsense drawn on there. They're shading here that's giving you a sense of form and three dimensions, whereas you don't have that yet, okay? So sometimes I can get somebody to look very much like them at this stage. Sometimes I find that I need to tweak a little bit more and then it starts to look better. And then later on, as I start to add some shading, uh, it does start to take on that person's look, okay? But in general, Right now, it should start looking a lot like that person. If it does not, just pick the spots that you feel stand out the most on your drawing and say, wow, that looks bizarre. I think I got that too big or too small, whatever the issue is. Then go look at that same area on your actual model and then compare that area to another area on your model. Say, oh, that area is the same as this area or three quarters or half of it or whatever. And then go back to your model or your drawing and then you say, well, my screwed up area or what you think is screwed up should be the same as this other area. So you go boom, boom, and you're like, oh yeah, I did it way too big. And then you make adjustments, okay? And by doing this little by little, this very uh, systematic way of working, this technique of using comparative measurements, you can draw anything. There's really, there's nothing you can't draw. It's a matter of having patience, slowing down, and making the changes that you need to make things happen for you on these drawings. Now, I just did the collar real quick and I just noticed at the top edge of the light on his chin right here before it got dip, I'm just estimating that to be about here. I'm just using experience to make that decision. That edge lines up with the collar, which is right there. And so I just did that. So you see how quick that is and how easy it is to make decisions on whatever it is that you're drawing, and you're making an educated decision. You're not just wild guesses. I always tell people that you should be able to explain every line. So when you're gonna go make a mark, are you just saying, boy, I hope that's right. If you're saying, boy, I hope I think, you know, I hope that's right, that, that's not good. You should not be, you know, depending on luck to get this thing done. You should know that, yep, this over here is the same thing as that thing over there. And therefore I'm going to put it this big or whatever, this small, because I'm supposed to. In other words, you can justify why you did that, why you chose that particular size or distance or whatever it is, okay? That's drawing with a purpose, that's drawing with a plan rather than wild guesses. Now I've drawn many, many years where I just I've sketched things out, okay? I have no problem with people that do circles and ovals and do all that sketchy stuff. I find that that is really great for the experienced artist. The artist that knows what they're doing. You know, they'll do this thing and then they do the, the, the another circle or oval or whatever it is, halfway across and they do all this stuff. You know, I don't have a problem with that. The problem I feel that is wrong with these techniques where you're just sketching 
really quickly and loosely. The person that has no idea what they're doing, they're going to have one heck of a time figuring out a bunch of circles and ovals and weird little lines because there's no substance to it. It's the wild guessings of an individual that has been doing it for a very long time. And to them, it's meaningful. But to the student, it's it's just, you know, it's it's Chinese to them. Well, unless, you're, you, unless you speak Chinese, but I don't. It's, you know, it's it's confusing. It's it's a language they don't understand. What the hell does that mean? Why a circle? Why I don't, you know, and I know some people will explain it themselves very well. Some people not so well. I just find this system to not work for the beginning artist. I've taught a lot of people over the years um, how I like to work. And there's many artists that work like this, not just me. Um, and they just explain it differently, but it's generally the same thing. Um, and I've seen them succeed much more from a very systematic approach than the person that, that, that does this thing. And the people that go into that and can stick with it, you know, more power to you. But I find that those people are usually very impatient and they just, they, they don't want to put out the effort. Um, and they, so they, they're drawn to this system because sometimes this system is a little too slow for them. But I tell you right now, I can draw extremely fast when I have to. I just slow down for the purposes of these little videos that I make to explain it. I try my absolute best to give you the, the, the best description um, and explanation that I can. Um, but yeah, I can, move, I can move through this process really, really fast, okay? So with practice, you can definitely learn really slowly, work across this, and then eventually you'll just do it one day and notice that it took you half the time that it took you uh, the, the month before or the week before or whatever. And before you know it, you know, sometimes I can knock this out in, you know, the basic structure in 10, 15, 20 minutes, okay, which is the average 20 minutes is about the average that a live model will sit and pose before they give them a little five minute break for coffee and bathroom break. And so I've learned over the years how to handle most of the proportional problems within the first 20 minutes. Okay. Now, I haven't drawn from life for a little bit now, so I'm probably a heck of a lot rustier than I was. But if I just did a few drawings, I'd, I'd go back right into it with no problem. So remember, Pennsylvania, the heck out of this thing. Proportions, angles, and alignments. Okay. P-A-A. -A, okay. I don't know any, any state or acronym that has P-A-A, -A, but I think Pennsylvania is easier for you to remember. So P-A-A. -A, okay. Proportions, angles, alignment, right? The angle of things, like I showed you earlier, compare one pencil with the other. The proportions, look at the big pieces. Notice I didn't bother with the little itsy bitsy stuff. I went right into the big meaty portions, right from the angle, go into the big stuff. Then if you find that your proportions on the big stuff is good, and it's still not looking like the per, then you go into the little stuff, the eyes, the eyebrow, the nose, the nostrils, the lips. Then you work your way down to the little stuff and compare those back and forth saying, well, on this guy, it's this big, so it should be the same thing on mine. And then angles, like I said, you know, do the angles match? And then alignment, this is supposed to align with that thing, that aligns with that thing, this aligns with the, that thing, et cetera, et cetera. So that's basically my checklist before I take this drawing or any drawing any further than it is here. And so now I'll take this drawing and I'll probably double check it again and if I feel that I'm doing good and I like what I'm seeing, then what I might do is just say, I'm done, which means I'm, I'm, I'm done with all this proportional stuff. And instead, I'll start erasing, which would be the next step, erasing out all of these little landmark lines, I call them, okay? Where we try to figure out these proportions. Let's get rid of that. Make sure you get rid of them because if you don't actually erase them, what ends up happening is uh, they, they'll show up in your drawing, and that sucks because then you got all this shading going on, and now you're trying to erase a little line inside of your shading, which is really difficult to do. And now you got all these little white marks in your shading, and everything looks really weird and 
and now you got to match the shading into that little spot. You're just giving yourself a heck of a lot more work than is really necessary. When all you had to do was take a little bit of time to erase. And notice I'm using my kneaded eraser. I don't use a hard white eraser ever, really, because that is just too hard and will damage the surface of my paper. So for that reason, I always use a kneaded eraser. These are nice and soft and they work great at getting rid of all this nonsense. Now, as you can see, just by getting rid of the lines, I believe that I did a pretty darn good job at making it look like Samuel Jackson. This to me now actually looks more like him than just a few seconds ago where I had all these lines, only because People don't walk around with a whole bunch of lines all over their face, right? So that would be that would be very strange. So that kind of takes away a little bit from the likeness. That's why I like doing my lines very, uh, very lightly, very softly, just because it helps me to see the person behind the lines and the accuracy. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video on my checklist for the uh, sketching phase going into the drawing phase. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, if you like this video, please hit like, and don't forget to subscribe. It always helps me out and it keeps you guys um, updated on videos. I apologize, I haven't been doing videos very often. I've come across some minor little family issues and had to move and deal with a bunch of stuff. And so I just haven't had the time to produce videos, but uh, hopefully, from now on, I'll be able to produce videos weekly or bi-weekly. Uh, and then probably during the, sum, uh, the summer, that we're going into the summer right now, I believe it's, uh, I don't know, first week of April or something, 2021. We'll, uh, I'll probably be producing maybe as many as two a week. So, you know, keep your fingers crossed and uh, pray for me and we can get these videos going and get you guys up and running. And I promise I'm going to try to make more videos on maybe on the proportions of the face and explaining that where you know what the averages are on the, on the human face and uh, if you have any suggestions uh, of you know some a topic that you would like me to cover please don't don't hesitate to leave me a message and let me know whatever it is that you think I should make a video on if I'm able to I will do that all right guys thank you so much for watching you have a great day